Hi, this is Roxanne Modafferi, and you're listening to INZ. When you think of pioneers of women's MMA, names like Rousey, Cyborg, and Carano come to mind. But the cumbersome figure of Roxanne Mataferi is one of its less respected trailblazers. As she dons the gloves for the final time, we take a look at Mataferi's 20-year fight career, one that took her from high school gyms in Japan to a UFC title fight. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Roxanne Mataferi. Combat sport has been a part of Roxanne Mataferi's life since the very beginning. Born on September 24, 1982, Mataferi began training in Taekwondo at the age of 13 before transitioning to karate, judo, and jiu-jitsu, all while majoring in Japanese literature at the University of Massachusetts. Mataferi's love of Japanese culture saw her relocate to the nation in 2003. And while working as an English language tutor in Tokyo, she made her MMA debut for the Smack Girl promotion that November, beating Owen 2 Hikaru Shinohara by first round armbar. After building a 4 0 record with Smack Girl, Mataferi took on 12 0 Jennifer Howe for the hook and shoot promotion in Indiana. Howe was regarded as the best female fighter in the world, yet Mataferi put on a grappling clinic to score an upset win over the lady from Utah. Mataferi spent the next five years bouncing between promotions in America and Japan, during which she claimed a high-profile portfolio of women's MMA pioneers. This included wins over Tara La Rosa, future Invicta champion Vanessa Porto, and a second triumph over Jennifer Howe, the latter of which saw Mataferi claim the IFC middleweight title for her first gold in the sport. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. The number one female fighter in the world, Miss Matafari. The greatest night of Matafari's career came on May 27, 2007, when she competed in a one-night tournament for the K-Grace promotion in Tokyo. After submitting Korean fighter He Jin Lee, Matafari claimed decision wins over MMA pioneers Marluz Kunin and Megumi Yabushita both of which were finalists in the fabled Remix 2000 tournament seven years earlier. With her IFC title and an earlier triumph for the Fatal Femmes promotion in Los Angeles, Mataferi staked a claim as the most accomplished female fighter in the world. By 2009, Mataferi boasted a 15-5 record and the accolades of hardcore MMA fans, but her achievements were soon being overshadowed by a women's revolution in America. The success of Gina Carano led to a boom in popularity for women's MMA, with Elite XC and later Strike Force hosting female bouts to both critical and commercial acclaim. Like an international pop star, Mata Ferry realized she needed to break into the American market if she wanted to be legitimized as a top-level fighter. And added with her struggles getting matches in Japan, she signed a two-fight contract with Strike Force in 2009. Amid much fanfare, Mataferi took on bantamweight champion Sarah Kaufman at a Strike Force Challengers event in Washington. A match fought primarily in the clinch saw Mataferi gain the upper hand in the early exchanges, before Kaufman began overwhelming her opponent by the time the third round commenced. Mataferi holds the distinction of only being knocked out once in her 20-year career, but it's one she and the fans at the Comcast Arena that night will never forget. Mataferi very active on the bottom end. Mataferi would lose her second strike force bout in a rematch with Marlouz Kunin before embarking on a run of form that saw her outclassed by far less established competition. As Mataferi's crude, grappling heavy style was antiquated compared to her western based counterparts. An appearance on the 18th season of The Ultimate Fighter did little to improve her fortunes. By the time she lost to Raquel Pennington at the Ultimate Fighter finale, Mataferi was winless in her past six matches and had become a figure of ridicule to those unaware of her early success. The happy warrior contemplated walking away from the sport, until an unlikely source gave her career an improbable second wind. 
In 2011, longtime MMA executive Shannon Knapp formed the all-female promotion Invicta. After growing concerned with women's MMA's future after Zufa's purchase of Strikeforce the previous year, Invicta held its first event on April 28, 2012, boasting a mix of rising prospects and MMA veterans from the sport's early years. Invicta sparked a turnaround in Mata Ferry's fortunes, winning six of her next eight fights and quickly becoming one of the promotion's most popular fighters, thanks in part to her fan friendly demeanor and playful attitude during the pre fight weigh ins. Mata Ferry's upturn coincided with changes in her personal life, committing her future to flyweight and relocating to the Syndicate MMA gym in Las Vegas, where she developed a vicious ground and pound game to complement her jujitsu. Mata Ferry's form even earned her a shot at the Invicta flyweight title, losing a split decision to Jennifer Maya, before she was coaxed back to the ultimate fighter as the UFC bid to crown their first champion at 125. After beating Shanna Dobson and Emily Whitmire, Mataferi came unstuck at the semifinal against Sajara Eubanks. But after Sajara was forced to withdraw due to a failed weight cut, Mataferi was drafted on 24 hours notice to face Nico Montano for the inaugural title. Despite a spirited performance, Mataferi was second best to Montano for the majority of the fight, until a Hail Mary submission late in the fight nearly turned the MMA world on its head. She needs to try to roll Nico to a bat. Oh, she tagged over. Oh, the other step. Oh, popped up. Slipped out. Mataferi would lose the fight by unanimous decision, but the effort shown on short notice was enough to sway company president Dana White. After 14 years and 35 pro fights, the happy warrior was finally in the UFC. Mataferi spent the majority of her tenure as a top 5 gatekeeper, often pitted against rising prospects with the aim of gauging whether they were worthy of the sport's top level. The matchmaking helped Mataferi claim a number of high profile scalps, including former Invicta champion Barb Honchak and a then unbeaten Antonina Shevchenko. Mataferi's finest moment came in January 2020, when she took on touted youngster Macy Barber in the prelim headliner of UFC 246. Mataferi entered the match as a near 7-1 underdog, but a combination of wrestling and a second round injury to her opponent saw her claim a unanimous decision, one that several media outlets later voted as the biggest upset of the year. The happy warrior couldn't capitalize on the win, as age and a rapidly evolving roster saw the 39-year-old overwhelmed by more athletic competition. Mataferi would go on to lose three of her next four fights with her sole win coming against Andrea Lee in September of 2020. Mataferi is set to face Casey O'Neill at UFC 271, having already announced the fight will be her 50th and last in MMA. Roxanne Mataferi can be considered MMA's greatest underdog. While lacking in physical attributes, her knowledge of the game and willingness to adapt kept her relevant long after her peers had retired. Mataferi can ride into the sunset knowing her place as an MMA icon is secured. A trash-talking icon, however, eh, well, your mileage varies. I feel outstanding. No stopping me. I'm happy. That was really lame. That's okay. <laughs> this is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.